case presentation of subacromial bursitis a 30 years old female presented in physiotherapy department with the complaint of pain and the crease movement of right shoulder pain was present on the lateral and the anterior aspect of the right shoulder history of fall and a mild trauma to the right shoulder was present According to her history, pain and restriction of motion was gradually increases after that incident of fall. There was no associated past medical and surgical history. She was active, with no such habits of smoking or tobacco use. Her diet was normal, she had normal sleep-wake cycle. There was no history of any allergy. Her vitals like temperature, blood pressure, respiratory rate and pulse rate were in normal range. The review of systems shows no involvement of any systemic issue with this pain. There was deep, aching, intermittent pain present at the anterolateral aspect of right shoulder. Onset of pain was gradual and the severity of pain was 6 out of 10 according to numeric pain rating scale. Aggravating factor was repetitive activities with right arm. Pain was relieved by taking painkillers. Following activities of daily life was affected. Pain while doing overhead activities, lifting or reaching objects. Pain become worse at night and was interrupting her sleep. Inspection of right shoulder there was not any significant joint deformity, erythema or muscle wasting. Slight swelling was present on the superior aspect of the shoulder at the region of subacromial bursa. On palpation, the skin temperature was normal, skin sensations was intact and there was tenderness present at the anterolateral aspect of the shoulder just underneath the acromion and acromioclavicular joint. Range of motion of right shoulder abduction and extension was painful. Movement assessment of right shoulder reveals a reduced active range of motion with decreased elevation, internal rotation and abduction, primarily because of pain. Right shoulder pain was present at the extremes of movements. Left shoulder flexion, extension, abduction, medial and lateral rotation was normal. The manual muscle testing of right shoulder showed, shoulder flexors at grade 4, shoulder extensors at grade minus 4, shoulder abductors at grade 3, medial and lateral rotators at grade 4. Differential diagnosis include, subacromial impingement, rotator cuff injury, biceps pulley injury, calcific tendonitis, adhesive capsulitis, acromioclavicular joint osteoarthritis. Speed test was positive. It is a special test to diagnose bursitis. Although other rotator cuff injuries and tendinopathies can also produce pain with this test. Nears test was positive. Nears test is performed to identify the occurrence of an impingement of the rotator cuff. But this test is also sensitive for subacromial bursitis. MTKIN test was negative. Painful arc sign was positive between 70 to 120 degrees of abduction. Cross arm adduction test was negative. Hawkins impingement sign was negative. Short-term goals include reduction of pain and swelling, prevention of weakness and atrophy of muscles as a result of disuse, patient education about bursitis, prevention or reduction of impingement and further tissue damage. Long-term goals includes improvement of muscle control, improvement of scapulohumeral rhythm, Improvement of active and passive range of motion. Restoration of strength of scapular and rotator cuff muscles. Return the patient to their previous level of function.
Management in initial phase. Patient was educated about her problem and was advised to avoid painful activities and the importance of relative rest of the shoulder. Cryotherapy was advised to reduce inflammation and pain. Low intensity pulsed ultrasound was used to facilitate the healing. Manual therapy techniques including grade 1 and 2 accessory mobilizations of the glenohumeral joint and soft tissue mobilization was performed. Following exercises was advised. Gentle pendulum range of motion exercises. Shoulder shrugging and shoulder retraction exercises. Isometric exercises of rotator cuff muscles in neutral and 30 degrees abduction. Progression of management in middle phase. To prevent re-injury and damage to the bursa, patient was advised to perform all activities and exercises in pain-free range. Low-intensity pulsed ultrasound was used to facilitate the healing. Manual therapy techniques including grade 3 and 4 mobilizations of the glenohumeral joint. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation in functional diagonal patterns and mobilization with movement, including caudal glide with active abduction was performed. Following exercises was advised, scapular stabilization exercises. Creeping the hand, up the wall in abduction, scaption and flexion. Pulley exercises. Active internal and external rotator exercises, with the use of, bar, or, a therabund. Management in return to function phase. Patient was educated about the importance of a home based exercise program. Cryotherapy was advised after performing exercises to reduce any post exercise inflammation. Manual therapy techniques, including proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation with increasing resistance, was performed. Following exercises was advised. Proprioception exercises including wall push-ups with the hands resting on medicine balls or dura discs. Strengthening of the shoulder elevators and depressors. Subscribe the YouTube channel to watch more such videos and press bell icon.